Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the following problem for you. It's a problem on the topic of trigonometric equations. Solve the following equation. 81 to the power of sine x squared plus 81 to the power of cosine x squared equals 230. Express your answers exactly in radians and as compactly as possible. That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do the problem correctly, the answers that you will get will be as follows. x equals to pi over 6 plus n pi over 2 or x equals to pi over 3 plus n pi over 2 where n is an integer. For more problems of this type, the interested student can refer to the following playlist. The link for the PDF file that you see on the display right now will be available in the description below the video. Okay, now let us try to solve the problem. The first thing that I will use is this identity that sine x squared plus cosine x squared is equal to 1 so this means that cosine x squared can be written as 1 minus sine x squared. This is a little bit promising, I would say, because using that formula here will allow me to have an equation which is only written in terms of sine x squared. Right now, I have an equation in which I have a mixture of sine and cosine. In principle, being able to reduce the equation to an equation in which one of these, sine or cosine, is the unknown would probably be a simpler equation. Okay, let us try to test this idea. So I will remove this and replace it with 1 minus sine x squared. So this becomes 81 to the power of sine x squared plus 81 to the power of 1 minus sine x squared equals to 30. Okay, but this is not hard to see now that 81 to the power of sine x squared is repeating itself in two places in the equation. Even if it is not transparent yet, after one calculation it becomes very transparent, yes. So what I do, I will write the second term as 81 divided by 81 to the power of sine x squared, yes. So I'm using this rule of powers a to power m divided by a to power n is a to power m minus n. So this number is exactly the same as before. But what is the benefit of writing this in this form? I can introduce an auxiliary variable. So I would say let uh, 81 to the power of sine squared x be equal to capital X, for example. Then I go back to my equation, I replace every appearance of this with capital X. Okay? So then it becomes capital X plus 81 divided by capital X is equal to 30. And that's an extremely su simple equation to solve. I multiply everything by X to get rid of the fraction. So the right hand side also becomes 30X. I move 30X to the left because I want to solve it using quadratic equation formulas, yes, PQ or ABC formula. Okay, but I see that the numbers are a little bit big. I ask myself, is it possible to factorize it in a reasonable amount of time? And the answer is yes. I need two numbers with the sum minus 30 and the product 81. So these numbers are minus 3 and minus 27. So I can immediately factorize it to x minus 3, x minus 27 equals to 0. Of course, if you don't like this, you can use PQ or ABC formula, okay? So let me double check. Minus 3 minus 27, when added up, it's minus 30. Minus 3 times minus 21 is exactly 81. So that's correct. And now the product of two numbers is equal to 0. So either the first one is 0 or the second one is 0. So this implies that either capital X is 3 or capital X is what is 27. But my goal is to calculate little x. Okay. Now that capital X is 3, this means 81 to the power of sine 
x squared is 3 but 81 is 3 to power 4 so this can be written as 3 to power 4 sine x squared is equal to 3 to power 1 okay these are two powers they are supposed to be equal the bases are the same so this can happen only if the exponents are also the same so this means that 4 sine x squared is 1 this means that sine x squared is 1 quarter so this means that sine x is plus or minus 1 half okay I will move these to the next page so let us go to the next one as well so this is one equation that I have to solve and find x the other possibility is that x is equal to 27 then it means that 81 to the power of sine 2x is 27 again 81 is 3 to power 4 so it becomes 3 to the power of sine 4 sine x squared and 27 is 3 to the power of 3 exactly for the same reason the powers are the same the bases are the same so it means that the exponents have to be the same as well yes so then it means that sine x squared is 3 quarters and if I take the square root sine x becomes plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2 so you see this is another equation of course two equations here one with positive and what negative sign two equations here so I have to solve four standard equations and the numbers are also very famous plus or minus one half plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2 so because there is no enough space here I will take these two equations remember them I will take these two equations to the next page okay now let us uh, solve this problem sine x equals to one half okay sine inverse of one half is 30 degrees but we are supposed to express everything in radians so it becomes x equals to pi over 6 plus 2 n pi or x is equal to the supplement of this pi minus pi over 6 which is 5 pi over 6 yes so this becomes 5 pi over 6 plus 2 n pi okay and of course an integer if I have sine x equals to minus a half then it means that x is equal to sine inverse of minus a half which is a minus pi over 6 plus 2 n pi and the other one is the complement to this so pi minus minus pi over 6 which is 7 pi over 6 so x becomes 7 pi over 6 and then plus 2 n pi for the other equations I have sine x equals to a square root of 3 over 2 so x becomes sine inverse of this number which is pi over 3 60 degrees plus 2 n pi and the other one is the complement complement sorry supplement supplement is 3 pi 2 pi over 3 plus 2 n pi and finally sine x equals to minus the square root of 3 over 2 gives me x equals to minus pi over 3 plus 2 n pi and its supplement again supplement is pi minus that angle which is now 4 pi over 3 so x becomes 4 pi over 3 plus 2 n pi so if you see I get 8 group of equations 4 sorry 8 group of solutions 4 here and 4 there but all these 8 groups can be combined into 2 groups let us try to understand it why so let us say that this is my unit circle okay and let us say this is the x-axis and that is the y-axis okay 
Uh, for simplicity, I think it is better for us to think in degrees here, momentarily at least. So, what are the main angles? So, these are not important because these are full circles. Okay, so then these angles and that angles are important. Okay, so where are they? So, this is 30 degrees. So, let me try to uh, give an idea what that is. Okay, so let us assume that this is 30 degrees. Okay, let me write 30 degrees, not in radian because it is easier to keep track in degrees, I think. Okay, the other one is minus pi over 6, it's minus 30 degrees, so if I can do it in a good way, yes, so let us say this is minus 30 degrees, so if you want you can, I can also write pi over 6 here, minus pi over 6, and the other one is pi over 3, okay, so let me, let me do these two first, 5 pi over 6 is 150 degrees, so 150 degrees will be exactly the mirror image of 30 with respect to the x-axis. Yes, so now this angle is 150 degrees or 5 pi over 6, so let me write 150 degrees 5 pi over 6. And then the next angle is 7 pi over 6. Pi over 6 is 30. When you multiply it by 7, it becomes 210. So that also becomes the mirror image of minus 30 with respect to the x-axis. Yes. So I get these four points. 7 pi over 6 equals to 100, uh, sorry, 210 degrees. So these four points are the points coming up from the first two equations, these two equations. Now I will do the same thing with a different color, for example, let me change it to purple, for example. And now, what are the angles? One angle is 60 degrees, so let us say this is 60 degrees, which is pi over 3. The other one is minus 60 degrees, which is exactly the mirror image of that point with respect to the x-axis this time okay so this is minus 60 degrees which is minus pi over 3 and now I go to 2 pi over 3 which is 120 so 120 will be here the mirror image of 60 with respect to the uh, y-axis so this is 120 degrees 2 pi over 3 and the other one is 4 pi over 3, which is 240 degrees, and that will be the mirror image of it, 120 degrees with respect to the x-axis. So this is also 4 pi over 3, which is 240 degrees. Okay, so of course I have 8 points, but these 8 points can now be uh, expressed in with two formulas only. Why? Because you see here, this if I start from here with 30 and I go 90 degrees, yes, I will get this point. And if I go again 90 degrees, I will get this point. And if I go 90 degrees again, I will get this point. So look, so let me change my color. So for the time being, let me put a dot here and I go 90 90 plus 30 it becomes 120 120 plus 90 becomes 210 210 uh, plus 90 will give me this angle yes because this this difference is also 90 degrees so if i write if i write x equals to pi over 6 plus 90 degrees at a time, n pi over 2 at a time, I am considering these green dots, all of them. But there are four more dots, okay? So let me change the color to blue this time. If I start with 60 and again go 90 degrees, I will get 150, and if I get 90 degrees more, I will get this point, and if I go 90 degrees more, I will get this point. So you see that. Uh, if I start with pi over 3 and go 90 degrees at the time or pi over 2 radians at the time I will get all blue dots and then if you see 
the dots are either blue or green so all dots are now covered yes so that is why those eight answers or those eight groups of answers can be summarized in only two groups of answers where n is an integer okay so that is the solution to the problem i hope that this video was useful for you until the next video be safe and goodbye Thank you.